about 605, so we're going to go ahead and, and get started here. Um, thank you, Mr. Lampy, for getting me getting me unmuted. Um, so I my name is Ashley Schwartzbeck, and I'm the interim principal here at East Lansing High School. And I want to take this time to really welcome you to our Zoom room. This is a uh, a time for us to learn a little bit more and to share some information with you um, about what it's like to be a student here at East Lansing High School. I hope that we have some students with us, some eighth grade students with us. Um, you are what we call our rising ninth graders, and we are very excited to welcome you into our East Lansing family. Um, I know that we have a lot of parents and guardians out there as well. We're going to be sharing a lot of information with you tonight um, that it's going to become very um, critical in the next couple of weeks as you make some decisions about schedule requests and things um, for your student. You're going to hear a lot about the curricular options that we have, um, but also about the um, many other activities and expectations things in the transition that we have here at the high school. Um, your students have an opportunity to come here um, in just a couple of weeks. Um, May 30th, we will have step up day. Um, and that will be an opportunity for your student to come and experience what it's like to be um, at a high schooler with us um, and to see um, some of the cool uh, opportunities that we have, meet some upperclassmen um, and get that full experience before they transition. And we'll talk about some other opportunities that you'll have um, to, to see and be integrated um, with our school in just a moment as well. Um, again, welcome to our East Lansing High School family. Uh, we're gonna hear a little bit in a moment about Trojan True um, and what's something that you're gonna hear as a theme um, throughout this coming year and what it means to be Trojan True and the expectations we have um, for our students as they transition into the high school. One thing that I just want to keep you keep with you tonight um, as we start to talk about our options and the many, many programs that, that we offer um, is just to, to think about this, that high school is an experience that many people, many students are waiting their whole whole schooling lives to get to. And it feels very, very exciting when we get here. And it feels like a time when we want to do and try everything. And I really, really encourage your student to be able to, to do that. It's a great time to explore your interests. It's a great time to be able to start thinking about the person that you want to be. But I also really um, want to encourage you as families to think about your child, think about um, their needs and to think about balance for them as they enter high school. Sometimes it's exciting to be able to try all sorts of things all at once um, or to um, do all the things, try to get all these things in your freshman year. Remember that you have four years. This is the class of 2027, which is just crazy, um, I think, for all of us to think about, even as educators. And I'm sure you as parents are thinking about that as well. Um, but for class of 2027, we have a lot of time together. You will have lots of time to be able to experience all of these things. Um, and I really encourage you to, to think about your own child. Um, and if you're a student, your own journey um, and to find that balance in your life. Um, this isn't a competition. Um, everybody, hopefully at the end, um, gets that same diploma, East Lansing High School diploma. That's what we want for you. And we want to set you up the best way that we can for your uh, post-secondary goals and what you want to be able to do after high school. Um, and so while we look at lots of interesting and cool programs tonight, know that you don't have to have it all figured out right here in this moment. Um, and you've got lots of time and you've got lots of people here that are available to help you if you're not quite sure what you want to do yet. All right, so we are going to go ahead and introduce a few other people to you. Um, we will, we are recording this presentation and we will be sending it out. Um, but this might just be something that you, um, if you've got a, a phone out, you just wanna snap a picture of. Um, this is the contact information for our administrative team, has my, uh, my email address up there. Um, that's definitely the best way to contact me. Um, I'll also introduce um, our associate principal Principal Quiana Davis Lewis. Um, she'll be talking to you in just a few minutes about um, some expectations here at the high school and really what life is like. Uh, Mr. Lampy um, is another one of our interim associate principals here at the high school. Um, he's been a longtime teacher with us as well. So many of you, especially if you have older students, may know, know Mr. Lampy. Miss Norris is our athletic director. She could not be here tonight. We are in full swing of spring sports and other activities. Um, so she is not here, uh, but she is definitely someone um, for you to connect with if you have any questions about athletic or other types of extracurricular activities. Um, she is definitely knowledgeable and she'll be able to point you in the right direction. So you'll be hearing from all of us throughout the night, but here's our contact information. If you ever need us, please, please, please feel free to reach out. 
I'm going to let Mr. Lampy jump in here with some of that Trojan True, as I spoke about a minute ago. This is our new uh, new initiative um, here at the high school. It's kind of a, a, a rework of some things that we've had going um, pre-COVID, and we're very excited to, to roll this out um, to our new incoming uh, freshman class um, because it really embodies a lot of what it means to be a Trojan for us. Welcome, ni incoming ninth grade families. Uh, it's it's good, to, good to have you here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Schwartzbeck. Um, I have the privilege of sharing with you our wonderful school, school community values that we encourage every member to strive and model in our space, both during school and at extracurricular events. Our school PBIS team, which stands for Positive Behavior and Interventions and Supports, adopted some of the great work and values our Trojan family had a few years back and added one that we think fits well with our district's mission. Our values are called Trojan True, and the true stands for trust, respect, unity and equity and equity is our new one we added this year so here's how the award system works we rolled out the values last last month during excel and we've been teaching and reteaching and reinforcing um and when any, any staff member sees a child exemplifying one of the four values they write them a positive referral postcard and turn it in to the black raffle bin in the main office every friday we draw five or six postcards and read them off on the announcements and then the kids come down to the office and claim their prize, which as of late, Squishamellows have been the hot item. So they've enjoyed those. And uh, all the postcards then get sent home for families to hang on the refrigerator. So you should be seeing them hopefully um, starting next, next fall. We, uh, we have plans to get some cool signage up in the school for next fall and some Trojan True merch to wear proudly around the school and community. So we're Trojan True. That's our new, new, new value now. And, uh, um, as Miss Barrage coined, Trojan True, Trojan Blue. So thank you so much. Next up, I'm going to introduce um, some folks from our uh, student services department, or actually just one person from our student services department, and she will kind of uh, give some overview of the services that they offer, um, but also take you through a lot of our, our, our programming. So um, Ms. Jen Jokek is our um, department chair for the student services department. Um, here you'll also see the list of the other um, counselors. Um, in just a second, we will have uh, another slide which shows uh, the contact information for our social workers. Um, so Ms. Jokek, if you wanna join us and uh, start to just let me know whenever you want me to move to the next slide. Okay, thanks Ms. Schwartzbeck. So hi, my name is Jen Jokek. I'm one of the counselors here. Um, we do have four counselors at the high school um, and we break things down by alphabet, um, last name. Um, we do, so Miss Scott is actually going to be retiring at the end of this year. So if your last name is A through D, please feel free to contact her. If you have any questions um, before the school year ends, but then at the end of the year and into next year, um, we'll have a new face for you to meet. Um, Mr. Barons has last names E through K. I have last names L through R, and Ms. Koss has last names S through Z. Ready for the next one. And then we have two school social workers. Ms. Polk is our gen ed social worker, and Mr. Schmay is our special education social worker. And just to take you through um, graduation requirements, things that um, all students have to take in order to get a diploma in the state of Michigan, every student has to have four credits of math, um, four credits of English, three science, three social studies, and I can um, you can see what the specifics are there on the screen. Um, students also have to take a half credit of PE, a half credit of health, um, they have to take at least one credit of visual performing and applied arts before they graduate. Um, a lot of our, it doesn't have to be just an art class. A lot of our technology classes also count for that as well. Um, students have to take two credits of the same world language prior to graduation. And we offer Spanish, French, and German here at the high school. And then students need to take four credits of elective to get them to 22. And I think on, on my computer, it looks a little cut off. I don't know if you guys can see that bottom. On the bottom, it says 22 is the total 
um, that they need for graduation. And then um, all students also have to uh, participate in the M step their junior year. So scheduling, I know this is one that you're probably all very anxious to hear about. So our rising ninth grade students are going to submit course requests through PowerSchool this year. Um, and we actually, the, the feature has been turned on. It is enabled as of 2.30 today. And so um, you are more than welcome to take a look at that. Um, we we loaded all of the scheduling information and all of the resources into the class of 2027 Google Classroom. And if you or your student um, is not in that, or sorry, if your student is not in that yet, um, I would really encourage you to have them add that because that's going to follow them all through high school. We'll post all sorts of information um, to them through that Google Classroom. I would encourage you, even though all the information is there now, I would encourage you to wait until May 15th or 16th to actually put those requests in the system because that's when the middle school counselors are going to be um, visiting the eighth grade classes and they're going to talk to them about all of all of this. Um, Ms. Koss made a video explaining everything and so they will come home with all of that information on the 15th and 16th. Um, and so we'll leave that um, window, the course request window open until Monday, May 22nd at 2.30. Um, that's when we're gonna turn it off. And um, the thing I want you to really know is that the course request, it's not time sensitive. So what that means is um, it doesn't matter if you're the first one to do it or you're the last one to do it. As long as you do it within the window of when it's open, Everything is going to go in as a request, and then what happens is the computer, um, our system, PowerSchool, will actually generate um, the schedules for students. And then in August, um, and these dates, we'll, we'll let you know these dates um, as it gets closer, but um, mid-August, schedules will be released to students. And of course, they will have the opportunity to um, drop and add courses in August, um, and we'll let you know those dates um, as it gets closer to next year. And so this is just an overview of all of the courses that um, freshmen are eligible to take. Um, it lists everything by, and this is also in our course description book, which is posted in the Google Classroom. Um, and so anything that you see that has a Y, that's a year long class. Anything you see that has an S next to it is a semester class. Um, and so that's, like I said, that's in our um, course description book if you wanna really take a look at that. Okay, testing out. So students have the opportunity to attempt to, to test out of courses at the high school. And um, all of this information that I'm about to tell you about is available on our ELHS website. If you just go to elps.us and then go to the high school, it's right there on the main page. Um, there's a form that you have to fill out and that is up right now. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can do that right now. Um, so when you fill out the form and say that you want to attempt to test out of a course, you'll be given um, study materials. Um, if you get a, if you, if you check out a textbook, um, you will have to um, submit a deposit check. Um, and then in order to successfully test out of a course, a student has to earn 78% um, or higher on the exam. Um, and what we do then if that happens is you will get credit on your transcript. It won't affect your GPA, you will get credit. And you can use that to move to the next, um, like the next course in the sequence. Um, and so, and we also, um, we, we don't allow students to take the tests home with them. So if you or your student would like to review the test, the curricular chair will do that with you, um, but the test will not be returned to the student. Um, you can only attempt to test out of a class one time, and it has to be taken during the published test out dates. And if you're planning to do that, what we want you to do, um, for example, if you're planning to attempt to test out of English 1, we want you to still sign up for English 1, 
and then um, we will automatically adjust schedules as needed when we get the results. And then the next slide actually gives all of the dates for that. So the deadline to submit the form is Monday, May 22nd. And then um, the study materials pickup is from Wednesday, May 31st to Friday, June 2nd. And that's at the high school uh, between the hours of 8 and 11. And then the dates that you have to come in to take the test, to take the exam, is going to be either Wednesday, August 9th or Tuesday, August 15th. Now, some of the special programs that we offer here at the high school, um, we offer many advanced placement courses, or we call them AP courses. These are classes that are rigorous and college level. And then um, at the end of the year, students can take AP exams. And if they get a certain score, then they can earn college credit um, from taking those exams. We have AP courses in all the core areas, fine arts, world language. I actually counted them up this morning. We offer 19 AP courses at the high school. We also offer the opportunity for students to take classes online. Students can take up to two courses per year online, um, and that is through Michigan Virtual High School. Um, it's a really nice way to, even though we offer so many courses at the high school, Sometimes there is something that we don't offer. And so, you know, if you're interested in a subject that we don't offer, doing it online might be a way to do that. Um, and if that's something that you're interested in, please reach out to um, your student's counselor and we can help you make that happen. We also do something called dual enrollment. And this is probably more so um, junior or senior year for students. Um, Dual enrollment is taking college courses um, through our local community colleges or universities. Most of our students take uh, classes at Lansing Community College. Some of them um, take courses at MSU also. And so it's just a really nice way to um, get college and high school credit at the same time. T but like I said, typically um, it's in, in, into that junior and senior year that students do that. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Schwartzbeck. Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of our high school 101 summer opportunity. Um, this is another opportunity for your student. Um, I would say particularly if your student um, is not so familiar with our building or is having any type of um, anxiety or just um, uh, concerns about the transition to high school, or if you just really want them to have an opportunity to have some transition time, this is a really great um, program. So High School 101 this year, it's a, it's a program just for ninth grade um, students. It's going to run August 7th through 11th um, and have two sessions. There'll be a morning session, one from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The next one um, will be from one o'clock to three o'clock. They're going to offer all sorts of courses in here. Um, uh, advocacy, school technology, self-care and mental health, graduation planning, study skills, um, all of these things. But I think the main thing that I, I, feedback that I hear from families and from students, what they like about it is that they feel that on the first day of freshman year, they know where they're going. Um, and which is just such a a leg up among many um, other uh, freshmen where they, they're looking around, they're not really sure where their classes are. Those students that have been to high school 101 really feel confident in being able to navigate the building, um, really feel like they're able to figure out where they're supposed to go. Um, and so that's a great opportunity um, for your student. Um, the form is here. It's also been sent out to you. I sent you a letter um, to invite you to this, um, this Zoom tonight. Um, and the link was also um, in that letter, um, along with uh, if you're not able to attend or your student is not able to attend uh, High School 101, um, we will also have our freshman orientation just a few days before um, school, and that way they'll also have an opportunity to get around the building. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start talking about 
um, some of our uh, departmental programs tonight. Um, and uh, real quick, first, we're going to talk about special education. Um, we offer um, some robust special education classes here. Um, we have two, two really different types of special education programs. One is more in the resource format and academic support. So if your student has an IEP that includes um, academic support or resource time, uh, we have resource teachers that are able to work with those students. Um, those teachers also um, teach some co-taught classes as well. So we offer co-taught classes um, in every grade level of different subjects, depending on the needs of our students. Um, transition meetings are happening here in May, so see your case manager if you have any questions about that. Um, but we also offer a, a cross-categorical program. We actually expanded that to two classrooms this year, which is very exciting. Um, students in our cross-categorical program just went to Special Olympics today, um, which is really exciting. But in our cross-categorical program, um, we offer math, English, life skills, science, social studies, all those core subjects um, for those students um, at the level that they, that they need it. All right, we're going to welcome Mr. Orange, Hair Orange, on to talk for the World Language Department. Hey, guten Abend. I am Adam Orange, and I have the great privilege of representing the World Languages um, for East Lansing High School. <clears throat> we currently offer three languages in-house that start at McDonald Middle School if choose, uh, students choose to take that. If your incoming freshman has yet to take their two um, required years of a language. They can start um, as a freshman. We have our courses here in French, German, and Spanish with AP Spanish and careers for French and the Spanish program as well. We do wanna make sure that you do understand that the two years of study at the high school level has to be in the same language in order to meet that graduation requirement. <clears throat> And we certainly recommend going beyond the two years if your student is college bound, but that two years of study is certainly the minimum that universities, um, other non-traditional um, uh, placements for after high school want to see. If you have a heritage speaker or a native or a near native speaker of one of our languages, we do um, ask uh, you to contact us. We have placement tests and opportunities during that test out phase to have conversations, do an assessment so that we're putting your student in the correct language that's available. Uh, to him, her, or them. And then finally, on the next slide, you're going to see that we also offer very robust summer uh, travel opportunities and exchanges that are long um, uh, traditions in our uh, school. And so we will have some summer trips coming up in June and July. And then already in the fall for our incoming freshmen, we will have information for upcoming trips for the next summer or the year after that. All right, next up is Mr. Burgess for the health math department. All right, thank you. My name is Jeff Burgess. Uh, I'm the department chair for the East Lansing High School uh, math department. And as we get started here, uh, a lot of situations, students are in different situations. So please, uh, you know, in a second, I'll have my email address. Has, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me any questions that you may have, uh, rather be big or small. And, uh, you know, if you email me, we can definitely have a phone conversation um, as well. And as you get going, I would just say, uh, please, you know, I would trust your student's current math teacher more than, you know, anything else. Um, we work really well and frequently with the middle school about placements, and we have constant conversations about uh, how kids are doing at the high school and the middle school. So I would really reach out to them if you have any questions, uh, as well as me. So um, most of us, the, the situation is, um, what math class is my child going to take next year? Um, and if your child is currently in eighth grade math this year at McDonald Middle School, they will be taking algebra one next year. Um, that's sort of the basic. Uh, math class that builds all the foundations for high school mathematics. So um, they'll be taking that. If your child took uh, eighth grade, or excuse me, algebra one this year uh, in eighth grade, they'll either be taking geometry or pre AP geometry. Um, and this is the decision that the kids that um, will be taking algebra one next year will also make um, as they go in their sophomore year. So uh, I get a lot of questions on what's the difference between geometry and pre-AP geometry. Um, and I'll start off by saying, no matter what choice they make, 
Um, it does not open or close any doors on what they're taking the following years. It's really just a one-year decision on what is the best math class that they uh, for them and that they can succeed in. So uh, geometry will cover the traditional geometry topics of shapes, rotations, graphing, uh, Pythagorean theorem, angle measures, things like that. Um, you can expect homework about two to three times per week for 15 to 20 minutes per night. Um, and they do more explorations um, where they're going to cut out a bunch of triangles, um, you know, rather by paper or technology and, and see what the angles add up to, for example, rather than writing down more formal traditional proofs. Uh, Pre-AP geometry um, covers those same traditional geometry topics, um, and it also covers the topics of matrices, law of sines, and cosines, um, and they do additional emphasis on the unit circle um, with those topics. Um, they obviously go at a quicker pace. And so they have nightly homework for 30 to 40 minutes per night. Um, and they emphasize more formal proofs um, and constructions with that. Um, and so, like I said, again, uh, we're gonna click over the next slide and no matter what decision your child makes, uh, you know, next year, it will not open and close any doors. So uh, if your child is in uh, eighth grade math right now, you can see in ninth grade, they will take algebra one. And then in 10th grade, they will then have that decision, rather it be geometry or pre-AP geometry. Um, and no matter what, then they can either take algebra two or they can take algebra two and pre-calculus, which is those two topics in one year, which allows them to get to those calculuses and AP stats if that's what they're looking for. If your child right now is in algebra one in eighth grade, you can see on the right-hand side of your screen uh, that then ninth grade, they're taking geometry and pre-AP geometry. Uh, and if you look, there's arrows going all over the place. And that is to symbolize the fact that no matter what uh, class your child takes next year, um, they can either, if they take geometry, they can take algebra two or algebra two and pre-calc. Or if they take pre-AP geometry next year, they can take algebra two or pre-calculus in 10th grade. So that's really the decisions or choices for next year. Once again, if you'd like to talk about this, rather it be via email or phone call, um, please reach out to me at jeff.burgess.elps.us. And I strongly consider reaching out to your child's teacher first because they have a really good understanding about where they're at um, as well. Thank you. All right, next up is Ms. Sherry Seika, who is the head of our English department. Hi, thank you, Ashley. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. As Ashley said, I am Sherry Seka and I'm the chair of the English department. I also work with the high school 101 program as does Mr. Burgess who was just on. So if you have any questions about that, either one of us can help you with that. Um, your student will have the choice next year to enroll in our English one course or they could take our accelerated English one course previously known as pre-AP English one. Um, in the English course sequence, students are required to take four credits. English one, two, and three are all required courses, and students can have some choice um, their senior year or for their fourth credit. They can take a combination of electives. However, they must take um, uh, our senior, if they don't enroll in our AP Lit or our AP Lang, they must take our senior composition writing course for at least one semester. The biggest difference between uh, accelerated English 1 and English 1 is probably the pace of the reading and the material that we read. Um, for example, in English 1, most of the textbooks that we read or the text, the novels, are read out loud and together in class, whereas in Accelerated English 1, there's more homework and students do the reading um, individually and on their own time. Um, both classes... Um, study, we do the writing, the literature, uh, the grammar, the spelling, all of that is in both of them. I would say that the, if your student, I'm going to reiterate actually what Jeff Burgess says, please feel free to contact me and talk to me about what place you think your student, uh, if they're questioning which level they want to go into. Um, but also the uh, McDonald Middle School English teacher is an excellent resource to make this decision or to help you make this decision. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm Sherry Seka, and my email is just sherry.seka at elps.us. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you for coming this evening.
And now Ms. Jackson, Ms. Geraldine Jackson is gonna uh, give us an overview of the science department. Hi everybody, I'm Geraldine Jackson. Um, obviously the uh, high school science chairman. Um, we have three required courses at the high school in science. That would be physical science, which includes chemistry and physics topics. We've got life science, which is biology. And then we have the required earth and space science. Um, and then we have a plethora of electives. So we've got um, five AP courses. We've got five elective courses. We've got something for everyone, honestly. Um, and if you have any questions about any of the courses, please contact me or look in the course description book. Okay, we have um, a few alternative pathways available, but we would really like to encourage your student to stick to the kind of traditional um, pathway because of the way that we're teaching um, science nowadays is a process. And you get a lot of the process skills in physical science and life science and earth science. So if they um, skip all of those classes or take something alternatively from them, they miss a lot of the great things that are going on right now in the world of science. Okay, but these alternative pathways are to test out. Um, and if your student tests out of physical science, they may take life science or P AP Physics 1 if the prerequisites are met. Okay, and there's some stuff in the course description book about math and, and things like that. Um, they also may double up on science classes. Um, if the prerequisites are met, a student may take AP Physics 1 in addition to physical science. And then finally, um, you could also meet with your counselor for a personal curriculum. But it is strongly recommended that students take at least four science courses at the high school level for college admissions. Okay, and that fourth one can be a regular course or an AP course. Um, so if you're interested in all of the prerequisites and when we when you can take different types of classes, um, please refer to the course description book and please don't hesitate. Um, to contact me by email um, if you have any questions. Thank you. We're going to skip the social studies department and come back to it. Mr. Pontoni is um, trying to get on right now. Um, I see him joining and we're going to come back here in just, just a moment. Um, we have Ms. Millard for the visual arts department. Okay. I know that she was coming from uh, a practice. Many of you. Oh. Can you hear me? There we go. Yes, she's coming from from practice right now. <laughs> I'm actually just pulling over, so nobody be scared. I'm not uh, driving and on. <laughs> go ahead. Um, hi, I am the uh, visual arts uh, chairperson for the high school. Um, I teach mostly the 3D art, so uh, sculpture, drawing, um, those things are kind of separated in our world. So anything that is like stackable, buildable is 3D, um, and anything that is like flat on paper is 2D. Um, so we kind of separate those based on the student's uh, preference, um, but they can bounce back and forth between 2D or 3D. So for our beginning classes, for our freshmen, um, we have the drawing, painting, watercolor, and photography. Those are all really great intro level. Um, if somebody doesn't really know what they like, but kind of want to dabble, um, drawing is going to be a great foundation for all of the art classes. And then the 3D courses, ceramic, sculpture, and fiber art, um, are all our intro level classes for the 3D. Um, I typically recommend sculpture and fiber art um, for a student who doesn't really know if they like art or not, but maybe wants to try. And the reason for that is because both of those classes have lots of different materials. So it's not drawing for the whole semester or sculpture and language just with clay for the whole semester. 
our intermediate classes are just the classes that are a little bit more, more advanced. Um, they all have the prerequisite of a um, intermediate or it is recommended that they have the drawing for those classes. Um, drawing two, advanced painting, computer graphic design and photography two um, are all just continuations of another class. If a student really loved drawing, we always recommend that they take drawing two after drawing one. Um, for the three option for that is ceramics two. If they love ceramics, would recommend taking ceramics too. Um, in terms of junior and senior classes, um, if your student is loving art, we highly recommend an AEP class. So the advanced placement classes are either 2D or 3D focused, and that could potentially give them college credit. That is a year long course uh, where the students develop a portfolio of artwork that is um, helpful to get them college admissions. So uh, all of our options are, are wonderful. Yeah, Ashley, go ahead to the next um, slide. So to I'm not gonna read this slide for slide, but to kind of dive in, like I said, um, drawing one is, in my opinion, the best intro level class. Um, it is useful at all of the art levels, even for the 3D. Um, photo one is, again, another really good one. Um, you can keep skipping through, Ashley, I don't wanna have to read. Uh, painting and watercolor are both prerequisites for our painting two class. Um, Mr. Corbett teaches those. Keep sliding through. And uh, the 3D classes again, um, sculpture and fiber are, are great recommendations just because the techniques and the materials are different for every project. So if a student doesn't quite know, they get a, a wide range of experience in those classes. You can skip to the next one. I think that yeah. was it. Here Perfect. So uh, my email is on the bottom of the slides. Don't hesitate to reach out if anyone has any questions. Um, I will say there are two test out options in the art department. Um, there is a painting one as well as a drawing one test out. And this is for... Uh, I don't recommend them for students who just want to jump through the program, but in terms of scheduling, if you're not able to get into a, a drawing or a painting class, um, reach out to me. That is an option. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We're going to head back for just a second while we get into the social studies department. One thing that I will just mention quickly about our art programs, um, our art programs are so fabulous um, that they sometimes fill up very quickly. Um, so one thing to just be aware of that um, even if we can't get into something freshman year, we have lots of time in high school to be able to do that. Um, but also at the beginning of the semester, always, if your student's really interested in getting into an art class, watch that drop and add period, because sometimes there are um, spots that open up uh, even in the first week of the new semester. Um, so always let your counselor know if that's something that you're really interested in. All right, Mr. Pontoni, are you with us? I am here. Can you hear me? All right, there we go. Another coach just coming from practice right now. Um, going to tell us a little bit about the social studies department. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I was uh, a little behind here, but here I am. Uh, the, uh, of course, the most important classes in all of high school career is your social studies classes. That's everyone already knew that. Um, at the uh, freshman level, uh, the only uh, classes that they are eligible to take are uh, regular U.S. history or AP U.S. history. And I'm going to talk about those in just in just a minute. So that's their, really their only uh, um, options that they are required to take U.S. history by the state uh, of Michigan. Uh, as they move through their high school career, there are a lot of really great options. Uh, as sophomores, they take world history. This is also um, when we offer AP world history, those are the classes I teach. Uh, but there are a number of other possibilities there as well uh, in terms of electives. So we have our brand new black history course, um, military history, comparative religions, et cetera. Um, in the uh, junior year, there are no required courses. And this is when they really get to branch out and try some of their, um, uh, some of our other offerings. Uh, there, there's AP government and AP uh, microeconomics. Um, I teach the AP European history course, and you can see on the list there, wide range of others. The psych classes, AP psych is there, the religions class, contemporary issues, et cetera. And then as a senior, they are required to take uh, econ or the AP version uh, and, and government. Those are both semester courses 
or and it's the counterpart for the AP Gov. So the only Gov and Econ classes they can take prior to their senior year if they choose to do the AP versions in their junior year. So a lot of a lot of uh, options, a lot of great teachers who are really passionate about what they're teaching are available for you. So Ashley, can you flick so I can, yeah. So the US history course uh, starts um, in what we call the Gilded Age in the 1880s is right after reconstruction uh, and, um, and goes up to the present time. Uh, again, this is a graduation requirement uh, and every ninth grader uh, uh, takes this uh, or they could take the AP version of this. And every parent has to decide a, if their child is going to get um, involved in the AP courses, and B, when they're going to get involved in them. Uh, the, the, the AP courses are much more rigorous. There's much more homework. Uh, uh, Ms. Barrage, uh, you know, puts in, in the slide that they got to be prepared to do three to five hours of homework and studying per week. Um, and when you get into some of the other AP courses, it's actually more. Uh, so it is a commitment. It is a decision that that parents have to make based on uh, their where they think their child is going to be most successful. Uh, you know, there are a tremendous amount of college credits that are available through the AP program, as you probably know. Uh, but it's also not for everybody, uh, and and those are sometimes tough decisions. But what we we never are looking for in this situation is putting kids into classes where they're really going to struggle. That's not really good for them uh, in, in any way. So uh, Ms. Barrage and, and I are more than happy to talk about the, the AP program at the social studies level. Uh, if you have questions about it, Ms. Barrage's email is there. Mine is just mark.pontoni at elps.us. Happy to discuss this with you at any time. And that is it, I believe. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Lars Allaire could not be here tonight. Uh, it is a very busy season for our performing arts department. Um, I'm gonna put this up here. He did share with me that, that a lot of information has already been shared uh, with eighth grade families about performing arts classes. Uh, we do offer uh, a really robust performing arts program from choir, band, orchestra, uh, jazz band um, as well. And so lots of, uh, options there. A couple of options that you may not have heard of um, are our piano and theater classes. Um, those are also really great great classes um, for freshmen um, to, to take and, and to get into, especially if, if they're not maybe part of a, another performing arts section. Um, so really something to, to think about. Um, these are classes that students usually really, really enjoy and, and build their schedules around um, to make sure that they can make this a part of their day. All right, we're going to turn it over. Mr. Mays is going to talk a little bit about our applied technology department. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Mays. I'm one of the uh, computer science and engineering teachers in applied tech at East Lansing High School, uh, along with Mark Pendred and a first year teacher, Orion Smith. Uh, we've got up here are just some of the classes that we offer. Uh, this department has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. And as we go through and look at classes that are great for freshmen, um, we have our classes open so that students can take them at different places as they go through high school. Uh, but the first year, a couple of good classes, Introduction to Computer Science, uh, what we give them is a, a good look at a little HTML coding and some JavaScript gaming. So they get a little variety there. Uh, another good class for freshmen is Tech Essentials, and that gives them a look at AI. Uh, we have a uh, VR headset uh, that Mr. Smith has the students get a chance to work with, a little bit of coding and some engineering challenges. Uh, they're all the classes that you do see in front of you, they are able to take as freshmen, but those two in particular, Introduction to Computer Science and uh, Tech Essentials are very good for your freshmen. Uh, as they go through the, their career, uh, definitely a sophomore junior class, we would see uh, typically see more students in computer aided drafting. Uh, what we do in computer drafting, we do some technical drawings, but then we do some manufacturing. They get to do 3D printing, 
Uh, we do some more technical drawings and then we finish up working with a laser engraver and doing manufacturing again. So if they like going back and forth between doing things on a computer and hands-on, computer aid drafting would be a, a good course for them. Uh, we also have an introduction to robotics and physical computing design. And what we do there, we have 15 VEX robots. So they only work with one other person. Uh, these are some very nice robots. If they enjoy that, we actually also have a competitive robotics uh, club uh, that Mr. Smith runs that meets uh, twice a week most of the year. So if they're looking for a place to get tied in as they get into high school and they, they like robotics and tech, I uh, highly recommend both uh, the coding club uh, or robotics club. Uh, as they get on to their uh, junior and senior years, uh, for the first time next year, we're offering two AP classes, the two different AP classes, AP Computer Science Principles. Uh, that is uh, pseudocode, so they're using blocks of codes uh, rather than uh, a particular type of script. If they want, they can do Python uh, as we go through the year. And then uh, as far as the content, 80% of it is coding, 20% is current topics, computer ethics, uh, and a lot of conversations uh, lately about AI. Uh, then the other AP class we have is APA, uh, where you work with Java. Uh, so we really do have a lot of opportunities uh, that are now available that if you went back four or five years, we just didn't have all of these options. So very excited to talk about the growth in the department uh, and the amount of students who have been interested in it. And it was a great pickup to find Mr. Smith. Uh, he's a East Lansing grad, a Trojan man uh, coming back from Texas. Uh, I'm not sure what he was thinking coming back from Texas to the Michigan weather, but hey, we all have our things. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me. Uh, my email is uh, kevin.mays at elps.us or mark.pendred at elps.us. Uh, not a split personality. That's just another teacher. Uh, definitely. I'll get back to you if you shoot me any questions. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. All right. Speaking of Mark Pendred, he's right up here for the physical education department. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mark Pender. I'm the uh, physical education uh, chairperson. Um, really, probably the, one of the biggest things that you've got to understand that uh, there is a half credit of physical education that is required along with a half credit of health. Um, you know, recommendation, if you can get that through in the first year, that's probably the best. Um, and then you can see the other classes that we have offered that are electives. We've got our yoga, strength conditioning, lifetime fitness. And there's a team sport, the basketball, floor hockey, and other team sports. So, um, <clears throat> so I think that uh, if you can get that recommendation done your freshman year and not having to wait when you're a junior, senior, uh, does work a lot better in your schedule. So if you have any questions, my email is there. Um, I'm glad you came out tonight, and we'll talk to you soon. Just to make sure everyone is aware, we do also um, offer lots of service for our English language uh, learners. If that is a, a service that your, your student qualifies for, um, uh, Miss Russell, who is also uh, a teacher at the middle school, your student may already have um, her if they receive uh, English language service, language learner services um, at the middle school. She is also here teaching at the high school, um, and we offer both academic and support academic support um, for uh, students who receive ELL services um, along with additional English classes. All right, so we are through all of our departments and that is a lot of information to take in. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind um, for your student is that one, um, their middle school counselor is going to be going over a lot of this information with them next week. So if you didn't kind of get it all, or that was a lot to take in, they'll be able to help streamline it. The other thing to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at scheduling is this. Most freshmen take um, four core classes, or they have to take their four core classes. We have six hours of the day, so really there's just two, two left there. Oftentimes, one of those is taken up um, with health or PE. Um, many times, other students will have their, their band, uh, orchestra, or choir class, um, and then potentially also a world language class. So those are the things that they'll be kind of um, looking for most their freshman year. So while a lot of the options that you heard tonight are really exciting and they very well may engage with them, maybe their freshman year, depending on their scheduling situation, it's also okay um, to get in and transition into high school, um, and they'll be able to look at some of those options potentially later on. 
Miss Koyana Davis, often known as Miss Q, is going to jump in now and talk to us a little bit about just the transition of high school and just some things that, that you need to know in our last few minutes together. Good evening, young Trojans. I will not be before you long. Just want to go through a couple of basics to prepare you to transition to the building. Some may be very familiar, while others might require a little bit of uh, new responsibility. Um, real quick, our technology and use expectations are pretty consistent with those of the middle school as they come down from our tech department and they're aligned with some of the state mandates as far as the things we need to disclose and the proper usage agreement pieces. Those will be coming home for you to look over and to sign. So just keep an eye out for that. Also, we um, use a Securely program here at the high school, which has really been a tremendous support. Um, no, we're not spying on you. You do get to use your device responsibly. However, you know, if you look up certain things, this uh, program lets us know in the office that something was searched. And sometimes, you know, it means that it will prompt administration to come and check on your Trojan or you Trojans who are here tonight watching with your parents so that you are able to, or with your families, so that you are able to uh, have the support you might need. I'm going to let somebody in this waiting room. All right. And then um, currently at the high school, we're using our one-on-one -on -one, um, kind of format. So every student currently either has a Chromebook or an HP, depending on grade level. Um, so far, that's looking like it might be the same for next year uh, at this point. Um, damages and replacements, let us know in as soon as you know that something is damaged and you might need a replacement so that we're able to support you so that you're not disconnected. Um, in high school, a lot of the material with some of the teachers is in virtual format. A lot of the programs and effective innovations that we use might require computers. So please let us know so that you can stay connected and on top of things. Communicate your needs in real time. Be prepared, charge it. Charge it, charge it, charge it. Let us know if you've lost your charger, if your charger is broken, if it's malfunctioning so that you can step into your classroom space prepared. Phones, anyone? I know that that might look a lot different right now at the middle school. Um, as you get ready to transition into your freshman year, currently we do allow phones. We do have permissible phone usage spaces and times that will be uh, currently identifiable by either a red card, meaning that it is not permitted, or a green card, meaning that you may indeed use your cellular device. With those devices, you oftentimes may connect to social media. And social media has really changed the way that students are interacting with each other. Um, a lot of negative behaviors are sometimes um, exchanged or there, there's lots going on within these spaces. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with any of these logos that you see here. We get a lot of, uh, I guess, exposure to them as uh, older people when the students are letting us in on, on different social interactions that are not necessarily in person. I ask each student to uh, use that responsibly. Please report anything that may feel suspicious, uncomfortable, cyberbullying, et cetera. Parents, I ask you to help us. Do a little bit of check-in every now and then. Check in on your children or your, uh, your student's phone. Make sure that they're uh, using their social media responsibly um, and support us if you see something that might seem alarming. Okay to Say uh, is a statewide program that is sponsored by the Michigan State Police. And this is a great way to report almost anything. See something, say something, and nothing is silly. Um, you can do that via text, you can use a computer, you can call right in, or you can send an email. You can also download the app if you have an Android or app or iPhone, and you can do it in real time. Um, for the most part, this has been really helpful when students might feel uncomfortable when they see something, um, but really want to report it. Go ahead, call in. They'll prompt you to leave the information necessary that will alert us so that we can investigate further. And if anything needs to happen, we can do what needs to be done. Um, I know it can sometimes feel strange to feel like you're reporting on a peer or a classmate, but we really encourage you for the safety of us and for the safety of others to let us know. And you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. If it's nothing, it's nothing. You won't get in trouble for reporting and nothing comes of it. Um, only good things can happen with this app. Tips for success. 
as you step into high school, just remember that time management is going to be really important. The rigor may pick up a bit than what you're used to. You're going to have to manage your classes. You're going to have to manage your materials as far as staying organized. So really uh, take the time to do that. Um, use your Google Calendar. Use your planner that will provide for you when you get here. Different strategies to stay on top of things. Student email is a very big way and also our social media is that we communicate with students and families. So be sure to check your emails regularly, um, making sure that you're up to date on any information that you might need to know. School events, um, teachers and homework assignments, even reaching out to a teacher for extra support or questions you might have. Student emails are a very um, helpful tool that we use. Also read any syllabi and rubrics that your awesome teachers take the time to put together so that they can deliver instruction effectively. This is going to help guide your work and what you need to do to make sure that you're making the mark, especially if your grades are important to you, right? Because they're all important to all of us. You want to take a look at that to make sure that what you're working toward is what the teacher is expecting of you. Also try to be flexible. There are going to be some, um, differences in those syllabi as well as classroom expectations sometimes so it's important to use those um those aids so that we can learn how to adjust from environment to environment which is a very uh, good way to practice being a young adult as we get ready to transition into adulthood also never be afraid to ask for help there's never a dumb question um, if it seems silly even in the classroom setting there's probably someone else thinking the same thing and maybe they don't have the courage to do so i challenge you to be brave and to step up and ask any questions that you might have so we can start problem solving also we have a uh curriculum enhancement period per se, uh per Excel. And I ask you to uh, take advantage of that time. It's uh, right now it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays for about 40 minutes where students are uh, assigned to an Excel teacher and they're allowed to get passes to teachers of which they might need additional support. Um, if they have questions, want to make up a test or was absent a day, it's a great time to just go back, circle back, get clarification or get caught up. Please take advantage of that time. And last but not least, stay true. Remember those school-wide expectations that Mr. Lampy presented to us early on tonight in that presentation? Those are going to guide your behavior, what you do. And it's also going to contribute to a healthy culture, how it feels being in a high school. We all want a community of warmth, and we all want to feel welcome when we walk into this space. So we're going to try to stay true, and we're going to hold you accountable to stay, to stay true as well. Also, some tips for success. Get involved. We're going to build some community. We've got so many wonderful things, lots of things going on here at the high school pretty much all the time. Um, so music, visual arts, theater, athletic teams, there are so many different things that you can do. Um, early on in the year, we're going to have students and different clubs and organizations host what we call Club Rush. That is going to be a basically like a gallery walk of the different clubs and activities that are available. So you can kind of check out what might stand out to you, what might catch your eye. Um, here in this slide, there is a link to our athletics page if you want to check out some of the things. Also, you may contact our athletic and activities director, Miss Nikki Norris, if you have any further questions about any of those things. That's it. So the last thing that we will leave you with tonight, we are almost on time here, just wrapping up under an hour. Um, the last thing we'll leave you with here tonight is this reach out page. If you have any questions about anything that's presented here tonight, I encourage you to reach out to these people or to that slide that we had there at the beginning that has all of our administrator email addresses on it. One quick note that we noticed, uh, Mr. Lampy, uh, his email address is listed as Jeff Lampy. He is actually a Jeffrey. So if you're trying to get a hold of Mr. Lampy, it is jeffrey.lampy at elps.us. Uh, we'll try to make that correction as we before we send this out to you. Um, High school, again, is a really, really exciting time. We offer many, many, many programs for your student, um, but I encourage you to set the tone 
at home to think about really what your students' goals and ambitions are. Those may grow and change as they do, um, but to start thinking about a plan that is most appropriate for them um, and make that collaboratively with them. We love it when we have student voice um, in what they want um, and make sure that they, we have a plan um, that really meets their needs and that they're involved in that. So please start having those conversations at home about what high school is gonna be like um, and just about how to get involved, how to ask questions. Um, and the last thing that again, I will leave you with is, um, Ms. Q, Mr. Lampy, and I, and all of those that have spoken here tonight are very, very open um, to any student that has any concerns um, or, or any family that has any concerns. So please reach out to us if that is the case and we're happy to talk with you further. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're excited to see your student on May 30th when they come up for step up day. Um, and hopefully we'll be meeting you in person very soon in the future. Thank you and have a great night.